Hello, everyone. I'm here with Rabbi Ben Volman from Toronto. He is a visiting speaker for January, and we're going to learn a little bit about him before he comes. Hi, Rabbi Volman. Can you share a little bit about yourself with us? Certainly. Um, well, I, uh, I grew up in a uh, conservative Jewish home in Toronto, um, but really I grew up in a very Israeli atmosphere. I, uh, I, I was the uh, uh, first child born in Canada to uh, a couple who immigrated with uh, two older children from Israel in the early 1950s. I grew up in a very working class neighborhood in Toronto, but it was a harsh environment in certain ways. And uh, we experienced our a fair share of um, anti-Semitism. Um, uh, and, and I had some, uh, some rough, rough patches that way growing up. Um, being Jewish in Toronto was um, not all that hard because it has a large Jewish community, a relatively large Jewish community. But my parents were not particularly connected with that community in a um, in a formal way. In the uh, changes that took place in my life uh, in relation to the gospel happened when I was in college, and happened very gradually. It began with um, uh, an older brother who came home. Um, he was uh, pre-med at the time at a at another at another university in another city, and he brought home uh, a Bible. It fell out of his backpack, and I, I, I happened to see it. Um, he and I spent a lot of time arguing, and I, I decided that in order to, uh, to impress him, because I was sure he was going to quote the Bible at me at some point, I decided to go out and buy a Bible. <laughs> and that's how I started reading the Bible. Of course, I ended up buying one of those Bibles that had a read how to shine it um i always i always joke and say i couldn't resist getting the two for one deal but i was reading the brief how to shine john 14 verse 6 and of course you know i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father but by me and when i read that passage um i i realized for sure that yeshua was saying that he is um he's not a rabbi, he's not just a gifted teacher, he's not just a revolutionary, um, he's not even just a transitional figure in history, he's, uh, he's God with us. Um, and uh, of course, being Jewish, I couldn't accept that. I closed the book on Jesus, and actually I decided to put the Bible on the shelf, and I thought I'd forget about it. Uh, you know, nobody needs to know what, what you've been reading, and uh, I... <laughs> You know, I, I had a very busy life, uh, but I couldn't. Finally, I was crossing the campus of the University of Toronto, and I saw a sign advertising a um, speaker, Art Katz, who at that time was a very, very well-known speaker. They brought him to Tro um, the University of Toronto campus, and that's where I saw him. And uh, I went to speak to him afterwards. I was sitting in the audience, and I realized, you know, he was saying everything I've been thinking about for the past year, and um, I, I sat there thinking about every reason why I couldn't believe, I, 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 I shouldn't take a real step of faith. Uh, I had one major reason why I could not believe. Uh, so I went up to him afterwards, and I, uh, I said to him, um, well, Mr. Katz, that was very interesting, but uh, what about the Holocaust? What about the Holocaust? And uh, he looked at me and uh, he said, um, that's a very good question. Now I have a question for you. Um, what are you going to do about the Holocaust in here? And he pointed at my heart. And as soon as he did that, I realized that I didn't have an answer. I, I knew it was there. Uh, the heart of man is desperately good. I knew what kind of person I was on the inside. I turned and I was walking away and he said, wait, 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 come back, come back. He looked at me and he said, you know, uh, you're ready, aren't you? And I, uh, I said, yes, 
yes, I'm ready. And he pulled me aside and he prayed for me in Yeshua's name. And um, I felt like a brick had fallen from my heart. I felt peace with God for the first time in my life. I mean, I, I, I've been blessed to have peace with God uh, over these years. And that is the, um, that's the heart of the gospel for me. relational gospel to you sure well um sharing the gospel is a um uh a, a, you know it, it, it's it's a fascinating um calling um officially i'm a missionary I, i've worked with missions for many many years although i um i would say my gifts are pastoral um the um the necessity of uh, being an instrument of the gospel is uh, something that has to be part of your life, who you are. Uh, and, and that's the way I see it. Um, the gospel is not something I tell people. The gospel is something I live. When I'm not living it, my life's not living. When I'm living it, I'm relating to people as uh, someone whose heart belongs to Yeshua. I, I, I don't talk about that very uh, overtly necessarily. I, I'm, I'm not one of those people who shares verbally a lot. Um, I like to listen to people. Um, so I'm a listener. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a careful listener. And I, my, my language is generally speaking very subtle. Um, uh, when I was a young believer, uh, my mother came to me and she said, um, uh, what, what, "What's happened? Uh, what's happened to you? You're you're not the same person. You're not the same person at all. What happened to you?" At the time, I had a bunch of friends who were, you know, they were very proud about telling their parents and everybody that you don't know Jesus, you're going to hell. And uh, I just, you know, I just, I just, I didn't believe that that was the quality of message I wanted to give to people I love. Uh, besides, I don't think they believe me anyway. <laughs> really, if, if you don't believe in God, you don't believe in hell. You know, you might as well be saying to people, you know, you're going, to, you're going to Pittsburgh. I mean, look, I mean, what are you going to say to people that really counts? So my mother said, you've changed. So I said to her, you know what, mom? I believe Messiah is. You know what her answer to me was? The way you've changed, Messiah must have come. <laughs> so uh, the reality of who you are is extremely important and i found that that's true um or it's you know if if it's not true uh you really don't have anything to say to people anyway i mean the worst thing you can do is is live like an unbeliever and then try to convince people to believe yeah. so um to me relational gospeling begins with that but there are moments you have to be ready to ask somebody, um, are you are you ready to to know how to have a relationship with God? I mean, you 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 want you know you talk about God, but how, do you want to have a relationship? With God? Do you know how to have a relationship with God or to accept Him? So between those two spectrums, between the your initial relationship and then that point where you know somebody well enough and you have enough rapport with them to ask them that question that that point where you know you know some people have like the two question marks on a little button thing you know that concept i have a technique uh you know to ask somebody to like do you know that is great when somebody 
has grown up and the gospel and accepting the gospel is already part of their own cultural mindset. It sometimes works too for people who are out of cultures where radical change is possible, where people think in terms of radical decisions. Um, you know, I was this, but I've made a decision and I'm going to do that. I mean, if your culture works like that. But Jewish people, in my experience, usually take about a year to think things over. Uh, a long time. Or somebody has been thinking about something and sometimes what they're doing with you is they're wrestling with you. Relationally drawing someone toward the gospel sometimes means being the point of resistance, being the point of rejection, even being the point of anger. Uh, and we, we just need to be able to take that with a grain of salt, we take that with um, humor, we take that with love, we take that with um, understanding. But there will come a time where you can ask that person, do you really want a relationship with Messiah? And that's the point. That's the point we want to, that we don't want to lose sight. Sure. Well, um, Maggie, my experience is that every individual uh, wrestles with God in their own unique way. And I have to be a, um, you know, I, I have to be a, a nurturer of um of somebody's um you know nascent uh, uh seeds of faith as yeshua you know yeshua said you know he sows seeds but what happens when they grow up well you know that that parable um uh some shrivel up some you know uh storms come some if a person is is not Jewish, um, and they've been raised in a an environment where they have seen people of faith in Yeshua and liked and trusted them. Um, the the resistance is different, uh, but we sometimes have to hear because we we have to hear, hear where that person has come from because sometimes. Uh, there's anger and resentment that's been birthed in the church. And that's that's one of those unique things for Gentiles. Is sometimes you're dealing with somebody whose um, uh, attitude of, uh, against God was birthed in a in a church setting, or it's been or it's set it or it's set in in a, within a church setting. And you may be the representative that that uh hears all those complaints that's one thing. but with a jewish person it's anti-semitism uh how can you believe in jesus when all these horrible things happen to us in his name and aren't you a traitor to your people aren't you a traitor to your culture aren't you a traitor uh and and isn't this isn't your real plan to destroy the jewish people and how can we still be jewish and believe in yeshua you know jewish people are are afraid sometimes uh, to really engage somebody like me. I mean, it's a, literally, there's I don't know, almost a palpable fear. It's like you've got, <laughs> well, you know, it's like you've got an infectious disease. <laughs> On the other hand, with uh, uh, um, Gentile people, uh, sometimes <laughs> they will pose that problem to you. How can you, being Jewish, uh, give up your culture to become a Christian? So, you know, it's it's very strange how um, you can be guilted uh, from both sides of the fence, mm -hmm. and you're caught in between. Um, you know, very challenging, uh, you know, cultural um, cultural tensions. So that is our, you know. That's part of the challenge that we face. So, you, 
being able to frame relationships within your within the context of your own gifts is extremely important being aware that every person draws another person out in their own unique way each of us has uh, a unique way of communicating authenticity and that's what the world wants i mean to be honest with you they don't really even care that you hold a different opinion the the most important thing is that you are authentically yourself be authentically who you are don't put something on don't be religious don't be something that you aren't be authentically who you are for that other person and say the best in what you see in me has happened because God came into my life wait for a person's um, moment when they you can see that they're trying to be really honest with you it is truly a gift to know that moment and that's what we pray for right um, you have to be prayerful and if you need to just quietly ask ask the Lord quietly ask the Lord is this the moment um, because you never know you, you never know and, and and God will um, God will prompt you God will open up opportunities and that's what we pray for especially for those people who are close to and with whom we develop a meaningful spiritual relationship or someone who's looking at us and asking themselves, how do I get what they have?